Matthew chapter 27, verses 28 and 29. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. Welcome to the Good Friday edition of the Word for You Today. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Hymnist Isaac Watts, who wrote the, the wonderful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, wrote in verse 3, See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Jesus wore a crown of thorns so that we could wear a crown of glory. Thorns in scripture represent sin. In Eden, when Adam and Eve disobeyed, we read that God spoke to Adam these words in Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. In Numbers chapter 33, verse 55, God tells Moses to tell the people of Israel, but if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 5, Solomon cautioned, in the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life stay far from them. The New Living Translation calls those snares and pitfalls a thorny, treacherous road. And Jesus warned in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7, 16, how to identify false prophets. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Author Max Lucado writes, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore represented all our sins. As we were caught in the brambles of envy, anger, shame, discouragement, guilt, bitterness, and unforgiveness. So Jesus, who knew no sin, became an atoning sacrifice for our sins. An atoning sacrifice for our sins is what John calls it in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And Lucado continues, not once did Christ use his supernatural powers for personal comfort. With a word, he could have transformed the hard earth into a soft bed, boomerang the spit of his accusers back into their faces, and paralyzed the hand of the soldiers who braided the thorns that made the crown that was placed on his head. But he didn't. Instead, as we read in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away nailing it to the cross. Jesus canceled the record that contained the charges against us, and he took it away 
by nailing it to his cross. And he did it with you and me in mind. That's amazing. And that is why we celebrate Good Friday. Because Jesus took our, thin, our thorns upon himself. As a result, our debt, yours and mine, has been paid in full. Hallelujah. That's the word for you today. Now we invite you to join us tonight for our Good Friday service here at the Village Church. It'll take place at 7 p.m. and also for our Easter services, Sunday morning at 9 and 11 a.m. Uh, also, we invite your children to come out and be a part of our church's Easter egg hunt, which will take place at the nine o'clock service this Sunday. We look forward to celebrating the resurrection of our Savior Jesus this Sunday morning. And we hope you will join us. If you can't be here in person, look for us online on Facebook or on our YouTube channel, The Village Church at World Golf Village. Have a blessed day, church. We love you.